Okay, everyone. Well, um, today we're going to welcome Tiffany to our class. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and let her introduce herself and then describe her position and a little bit about herself. Hi, I'm uh, Tiffany Walker. I am a certified athletic trainer. I am working up in Alaska currently. I work for OPA on um, its Orthopedic Physicians Alaska, and uh, we are con contracted to work at the local high schools. So we are outreach based. Um, and my background, I uh, went to undergrad at University of Tampa, and then I did my undergraduate at, or my, my graduate at University of Florida. And I was a GA there where I worked with a local high school and then a college uh, my second year there. And then moving on from there, I worked at a, a division two college for two years. And then I moved on from there and I worked at, at Spartanburg Regional through an outreach position, kind of um, like what I'm doing here. I was at a junior college for seven years. And then I spent two years at a high school before I left and moved to Alaska. Wow, that's like, it sounds like you've had a pretty diverse kind of background working with a range of, you know, both high school and um, pretty elite college athletes. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely been able to work with this spectrum, like to your middle schooler who has had their first boo-boo <laughs> to all the way up to like some pretty elite athletes. Uh, the baseball players I worked with at the junior college level, they were ones that were looking to move on to either division one school or to get drafted. So I got to deal with some pretty like elite level athletes. So it was pretty fun. Oh, that's cool. Go Gators. Yes. Go Gators. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that went to you UF were just like, yeah, go Gators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, that's, that's great. I mean, I think that um, diverse experience is awesome. And it sounds like you maybe did a lot of that early in your career. So um, let's just go back to like very first, like as you started like deciding that you wanted to get into athletic training, was there like a class or kind of what made you make that decision as you were kind of weighing out your options? I think I was always geared towards helping people. And at first I was looking at physical therapy Mm -hmm. And then I played basketball in high school. And I think this is almost like every athletic trainer's story is they played a sport, they got injured, they had an experience with an athletic trainer that made them think, oh, this is the career I want to be in. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened with me. I was already geared towards the physical therapy and I figured this would uh, integrate my love for sports and my love for like helping people get better. Oh, cool. Um, what was like, as you were um, in your undergrad, was there like a class or a course that you like really enjoyed that you thought was really relevant to your future? Or I guess not even, maybe there was, maybe you took like a history class where you're like, this is amazing, but. <laughs> I think coming into undergrad, I knew what I wanted to do already. Yeah. So, um, but my first um, athletic training class, uh, prevention and injury of athletic injuries that's you know what really hooked me uh, mm -hmm. we had an awesome professor and I still look back to what she taught me um, her name was Kim and she had Kimisms and I still use those to this day so it's pretty awesome but um, she hooked me <laughs> <laughs> um well that's awesome so you went through your undergrad and then you knew that you needed to go on to get further education for your career so like what was that process like like getting from an undergrad degree to your graduate like how are there any like tick tips or tricks you would talk to a student about getting into a program or making that choice about getting into a program yeah um when I went to college, the the thing, I guess the programs now are set are a little bit different. Um, back when I went to college, uh, you got your bachelor's in athletic training, and then you could sit for the BOC, and you can become an athletic trainer. But almost seventy five percent of athletic trainers at that point were moving on to get their masters. And it would just help get you because you would get a GA position and it would help you get two years of experience 
under, um, you know, mentorship, mentorship. So that was the route pretty much everyone took. And now they are changing it on um, uh, the year 2022. Everybody is moving over to an entry level master's program. So you can you'll no longer be able to get your certification uh, for athletic training until after you graduate from your master's program. So you can't get it after a bachelor's anymore. So it's a little different now, um, what like future students will be going into. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing is, um, is making sure that you make professional uh, connections, networking, you have references, uh, when you are in class, you make sure you're engaged uh, and you really try to, uh, you know, connect with your professors. So when you do move on to the next phase, mm -hmm. those are the people that um, the, the program will be looking at and asking questions about, is this a good student? So you mm -hmm. need to make a good um a good impression early on so you have those people to like lean on when you do apply mm -hmm. for athletic training are there any types of like internships or shadowing hours or anything like that that they um, ask you to do as part of your admissions uh i believe that when i was when i was in school um i think you you did shadow, you did do a few hours before um, you were admitted into the program, um, just to make sure that's exactly what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, now, now there's like internships and residencies after you graduate to kind of help build your, um, your experience to move on to a full-time job. Um, and yeah, you do, you will, you will shadow, but a lot of times it's tied into the actual athletic training program itself. Oh. And, then, and also once you're into the program, that's, it's a lot of hands-on. Mm -hmm. So you will be, uh, when I was an undergrad, I was attached to certain uh, certified athletic trainers in certain sports. So when I was an undergrad, I worked women's soccer. Well, I was tied to that athletic trainer and I would pretty much be in the athletic training room whenever that athletic trainer was, whenever the uh, women's soccer team was practicing, I was there, games, all that stuff, I was there. So um, you have that internship tied into the program. That's nice. Um, so once you're in the program, like what would you say is kind of the most difficult part or something that students could, should try to prepare themselves kind of uh, as they think about joining that program? Uh, time management is huge because you're gonna be expected to be there a lot. Uh, they've kind of pulled back as much, you know, pulled back like the number of hours you're expected to be in the training room and working with athletes, but I was working 35 hours, almost 40 hours a week in the training room with the teams. And then also I had my classes. So you have to really be good at, at the time management part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, once you've finished your work, do you have to go through some type of accreditation process or is there an exam that you have to take? Yeah, for once you graduate with your degree in athletic training, then you will sit for the BOC, which is the National um, Board of Certification for Athletic Trainers. So you have to pass that to become a certified athletic trainer. And then you, most, most states also have has a licensing that you have to go through as well. So you have to apply to that and become a state licensed athletic trainer before you can practice. Oh, okay, nice. And then uh, it sounded like you moved around to, to a couple different positions and you got to, again, work with like a variety of different athletes. Like, is there a type of athlete that you prefer to work with or did you like working with outreach? Like, I guess we can kind of ball this into like, what are all the different things you can do with athletic training question as well? Um, <laughs> that's a pretty big question, I know. 
Yeah, I guess my favorite athlete to work with is one that comes in wanting to get better and with a positive attitude, no matter what grade level or, you know, um, what kind of experience or skill level they're at. If they want to come in and they want to get better, they're fun to work with. It's so much better than those grumpy athletes that want you to do it all and don't want to work to get better. So that's kind of what I prefer to work with. Um, now, nowadays with athletic training, we are in so many different settings. Uh, obviously the local high schools, uh, the colleges, professional level. Um, we are also in performance arts, uh, military athletic trainers, uh, there's also athletic trainers that work in uh, physicians offices, almost like an MA. So they're the ones that will take the patient back, get a history, and then they assist on like casting and splinting. And a lot of sports medicine doctors uh, actually employ athletic trainers in their offices. So then they can have a good line of communication with the local athletic trainers so they can communicate about athletes to each other. So it's really helpful. And it's just, it's nice to have all those different options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so as you've chosen this profession, like I think we kind of, I kind of hit upon this in the last question, but like, what's your favorite part of your job? Like, what do you, what do you love about it? Like, what is the thing that gets you going in the morning when you go to work? Uh, I love the rehab aspect of it. Um, I love working with an athlete and getting them back to the level that they were at. You know, you're there, you get to know the athletes before they get injured, uh, which is different than almost any other medical um, profession out there. So you get to actually get to know the athletes, know what they were capable of before they got injured and say, if they got an ACL injury, you're there for them when it happens. And then you can also be there for them and help progress them through their full rehab pro progress. So post-surgical, helping them out, dealing with that. And then, then it's also, it's just a lot of fun when they get to that level when they're almost back to sports and you get to really push them and really kind of see like what, what they're about. It's a lot of fun. So that's my favorite part. And also you get to be a part of a team. So you get to be around people that you're familiar with. And um, it's just, it's kind of like, it's a great environment to work with. Yeah. And I'm sure it's great when you get to share in their successes and get to kind of mourn with their failures. And then, I mean, you're actually kind of a consistent part of the team too. You get to kind of see it change and evolve as the years pass as well. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's awesome, like, being in contact with your old athletes and seeing what they do in, in their future, and um, how we know each other is through one of my former softball players, and um, just that team was a pretty special team. Um, it was a junior college, uh, one of the best teams I've worked for, and it was a great group of girls, and... I just think there was a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of trouble too. But, <laughs> but you know, it was just, it, it was a lot of fun to go through that experience with them. Um, going to the JUCO World Series, um, seeing them lose their first game and then fight back and have a chance at the national championship, which unfortunately they came up short. Um, but it was it was just awesome to be a part of that. And, and even when they were inducted into the Santa Fe Hall of Fame, I was asked to be there. And the coach just said something about me and it was about being part of the team. And it was just really, really cool to have that recognition. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, just having that sense of community, I think is so important. It's like you get to help people, but you get to help people that you really care about and you have relationships with. You know, yeah. professionally, that's kind of cool. Cause I think everybody, you know, they, people become doctors because they think they're going to become the family doctor that knows all of their patients. And often it's just, you know, random people walking through the door, but you know, in, in the profession that you're talking about, you see those people every single day, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Definitely the best part of it. <laughs> 
Um, well, that's kind of the fun part. I guess it's always nice to al also acknowledge like if they're what the, um, I don't want to say downsides or negative sides, but like, what's the th part of your job that people don't maybe think of or consider like whether it's like paperwork or sometimes a hard work life balance or, you know, like what's something that people should maybe take into account when they're trying to make this choice. Yeah, almost, um, you know what you're saying, the good part, you see those people every day, like, you literally see those people every day sometimes. <laughs> um, so you don't get that normal uh, work schedule. You don't get that normal work-life balance. Um, that's one of the reasons that what pushed me to go into the high school is to be able to have more weekends, uh, weekends off and you know get to explore and do more things uh, that I kind of missed out on when I was younger and I was like fully into my career. And I, you know, felt like I missed out on things because I did not draw that work-life balance like I should have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the crazy hours, the evenings, not being able to come home and eat dinner with your husband, you know, missing out on some weekend things your friends are going to go do and you can't because you have to work. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the game schedule, right? Like if you're going, yeah. like, you think Friday and Saturday nights, like, I mean, I'm sure you've had very few of those free because it's generally when games are. Yeah. So. And, and for some reason, Alaska is really weird and they play high school football on Saturdays, hmm. which I was not expecting when I moved up here. What is their season start like in August and end in like September? Oh, uh, starts like late July and ends like early October. Oh, okay. Those October games are pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why they play in on Saturday is because they can play in the middle of the day instead yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that might be the way it is sometimes. Sometimes in Montana, I'm not quite sure. No, I know we have a lot of Friday night games. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. So asked you about the positives, the negatives. Um, are there any, like, is there any continuing ed education or professional societies that you are a part of that you think is important for somebody to participate in for your career? Uh, there's like so many different opportunities for continu continuing education and social media is really making it like pretty easy to have resources, like free resources. I actually, um, Pay. It's uh, Mike Renald. He's a huge PT ATC. He um, was the Boston Red Sox head athletic trainer. Now he like owns his own company, and he does a lot of educational uh, information, like programs, like shoulder programs, core stability programs. So I follow him, and I'm like I do the inner circle. So he does like monthly videos on a certain subject and it just it keeps you up to date it helps you kind of because there's a lot of research that comes out and it's hard to like read it all and still work full time so this kind of like helps you break it down and um in like smaller pieces and kind of you know draw out the um biggest con conclusions and what you can apply to your actual practice so that's the big one that I follow yeah, I think so often students think like, oh, I'll get my degree and then I never have to learn anything ever again. And just recognize that, in, especially in the health professions field, like, you know, the research is always being conducted in the background, whether you're part of it or not. And then that has to end up getting translated into practice somehow. So it's like making sure you're staying on top of those things and staying educated, kind of like you're talking about, um, because that field is, the fields are always going to be evolving, especially in health professions. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's some stuff like, especially because I've been in this field for 15 years now, mm -hmm. and the stuff that we used to do for concussions <laughs> is not what we do now. So, you know, <laughs> you have to stay on top of it. You have to know what you're talking about, what you're doing, because, you know, especially say concussions, that's, you know, like possible life or death if you don't do the right thing, if mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing. So, yeah. and you know, there's just treatment techniques and all the stuff that like that's new that comes out and you got to stay on top of it. Everybody sees KT tape and, you know, foam rolling and all that stuff. And that's stuff that we didn't do when I, I first came out. So it's fun learning new things and like adding it into your practice. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, I think people like having an active mind and always kind of learning new things, you know, it's never, it's kind of boring to kind of just sit at a desk or do whatever you're doing, like the same again and again and again. So being able to continually evolve and grow with your field, I think is really fun. At at least that's how I feel about my job, but. um, Yeah, absolutely. I have like, I follow like Instagram and I'm always like, oh, that's the really cool exercise. I need to use that. I know exactly what athlete I'm using that on. (laughs) Uh, that's cool. Um, okay. Well, um, I'm getting, we're, we're, you've answered quite a few of my questions. What's like the weirdest slash coolest thing you've ever seen as part of your job? Like, have you ever been part of like a, an open fracture break where you're just like, Whoa, like, I mean, I feel like you've seen probably a lot of really interesting things. So this is kind of a a question I wouldn't ask anybody else, but I feel like in your particular field, (laughs) I see a lot of really interesting, crazy things. Yeah, I think like the worst, grossest one was a dislocated ankle at a wrestling tournament. That one, I like, it was a really long day. This is a championship match. And it was the, at like, it was, it wasn't even my athlete. It was the other one, the other wrestler. And he fell down screaming and I was just like, gonna go take care of this kid so we can finish this match I started walking over and his toe is point his toes are pointed the wrong way and I was like all right let me go get that vacuum slant (laughs) and yeah so like me and the other athletic trainer that was at the uh tournament we um splinted him up and you know got him ready to go and that was pretty interesting because you always learn about it, but you never like splint a foot that's pointed the wrong way before. So, you know, and then you could tell the kid was in shock because he was starting to make jokes while we were waiting for the ambulance. So <laughs> I was really surprised how calm he was. <laughs> I think that's when your nervous system kind of takes over and you're just like, thank goodness, you know, otherwise if you're really, you know, getting the whole weight of it, you'd be like, just freaking out yeah absolutely because he kind of was at first and then he calmed down and just like I think he was a little in shock yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness that's crazy um well let's see what other questions do I have well I guess the last question I have for you um if you I mean I guess I'll open it up is there anything else about athletic training you want to share with our students uh you know like for me, I'm kind of like, I'm at this point uh, across the ro- roads in my life. And actually, um, I am looking to, I applied to physical therapy school. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because uh, for me, the hours, it, the hours have been getting to me. Um, so I just kind of want a more normal life. And my husband always asks me, he says, do you want to be 65 and standing on a sideline? <laughs> and honestly, I don't. So, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta really love this job. And, um, and I think, um, just like a lot of health professions, uh, we get taken advantage of. So if you do go into the athletic training, you have to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of you don't let yourself get burned out because the level of burnout in athletic training is really high. So you have to make sure that like you really um, stand up for yourself and make sure that you're not being used, that you are getting paid what you're, you deserve to get paid because if not, you're be- gonna become bitter about everything, so. <laughs> no, but I think that's a great piece of advice, especially for young people, because I think often when they go out into the world, they think that they can't be their own self-advocates, you know, and yeah, you, you know, um, you have to defend yourself. You have to defend your time and what you're worth. Exactly. And there's coaches that will try to walk all over you if you don't. And, you know, colleges that say they don't have money to pay for athletic trainers or you know, more staff, but, you know, they're paying the coaches, like, a lot of money, so it's like, no, you have the money, you just don't have the priority, right, Yeah. so you just have to make sure that you advocate for yourself, definitely. Yeah, 
Um, and that kind of, I think, maybe rolls into the last question I have for you, which is like, this is just a, a broad like life question. It doesn't have to be about athletic training, but you know, like you and I have, you know, lived our lives, have some experience under our belts. And what would you say to a young person these days, like about just life in general? Uh, you know, I think that you can't always take things too seriously. Uh, there are situations that you're going to come into and, you know, it's not going to be uh, what you want and complaining about it isn't going to make things better. Um, so you need to make sure that you work to improve things and communicate uh, effectively because I think a lot of issues that um, become really big could be solved by communicating better. So I think if you communicate better, um, you can help uh, prevent a lot of problems. And also like you, if you cause a lot of trouble <laughs> where you work, you know, you're going to be looking for those people for references to move on. So you don't want to burn your bridges. So if you do have a problem, communicate about it and then move on and don't hold grudges um, mm -hmm. because in especially in healthcare you work with a lot of people so you want to make sure that you are a positive influence and not a negative influence yeah and if also if you're like location bound yeah I feel like healthcare fields are pretty small communities so if you burn a bridge in like one like let's say high school or community or whatever, everyone in that community is essentially gonna probably know about it eventually, you know? Like, so it's just a matter of like making sure that you're keeping accountable to yourself as well as those around you. Yeah, and that's, you know, one thing that like, I didn't learn when I first started. And my first real job, I, it was, it was a hot mess, <laughs> not, not gonna lie. And working in that like small athletic department and just, and there was a lot of bickering and complaining and it was not a good environment. And I got rolled up into it. And when I finally left and I moved on from that school, I realized I was like, I could have done things way better. And that's, you know, something that I pushed to do, you know, like there on out was to try to like advocate for myself, but, you know, don't bicker, try to communicate, you know, and it's just dealing with people like you're going to have to deal with people. You're not going to always completely agree with everybody that you um, come into contact with, but it's the not letting that get to you and keeping a positive attitude that will, you know, help people continue to respect you. Yeah. And I think that says a lot about just workplace environments. You talked about how that first place yeah. you worked wasn't necessarily like the healthiest workplace environment. And I think when you're choosing places to work, that's definitely something to take into account because, you know, it's, uh, an, an institution is often composed of people who are following leadership and following specific types of, you know, um, attitudes. And so you want to make sure that that's a positive place for you to be. Um, and if it doesn't feel that way, um, it's probably worth looking at other options, you know, because I, I, we, we don't work necessarily in the same field, but I can definitely say like workplace dynamic has changed depending on where I'm at. And that changes my quality of life and my performance substantially. Absolutely. And that's, you know, just something that you usually you aren't told about, you know, you're told about like, you know, especially in athletic training, it's like, find a good college that and then, you know, like in find some place that will like pay you well, but that's not everything that goes into being happy in your position. Oh, for sure. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's, that's all the questions I have for you, unless there's anything else you'd like to add. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've talked enough. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to thank you really quick. I'm going to um, stop recording and then you and I are going to chat for a few more minutes. But again, I just want to thank you so much for your time and all of your, um, your insightful comments. You're welcome. <laughs>